Hello friends, welcome to my channel Sushant Chess Files. Today we are going to look at a game study based on the Allegor Gambit. First, let us see what is Allegor Gambit. It's part of King's Gambit. So after the moves e4, e5, f4, this is the beginning of King's Gambit. When we did openings for black, we covered this King's Gambit to some extent. And in that I have explained the basic ideas. White wants to give up his side pawn for the center pawn and he wants to get control over the center. So the main way for black is to accept the pawn. White often gives up this pawn permanently because black can hold with the move g5. He can protect this pawn forever. So white is not really looking to regain this pawn. He wants better development and he wants superior center control. So he is able to get both. Often white sacrifices his piece. So today's game is somewhat related to that. Right now black has a threat. QH4 check. So here only two moves are decent. One is LF3 and other is the move Bishop C4. Bishop C4 is called the Bishop's Gambit. After the move QH4 check, King F1 is spread. Which looks very risky but it's playable. The main move is LF3. White develops the knight, stops queen h4 check, controls the d4 and e5 squares and soon looks to complete his development fast. Black plays g5. The idea of g5 is not to protect f4 now but black threatens g4 himself. This knight was the defender of check on h4. So g4, knight moves and qh4 check is the threat. So white has to decide now what to do about g4. There are some very interesting gambits here. One of them is the move bishop c4. And after g4 white plays castle. And after gf3 queen f3 simply gives up the piece for better development. White has won the rook on f1, queen on f3 and bishop on c4. Three developed pieces versus black's none. That is called the museo gambit. So we will be discussing all this in detail later on. Other main move consists of the move h4. This h4 attacks the g5 pawn and after the move g4, h4 pawn has not only stopped qh4 but given plus to the knight on the g5 square. Our today's discussion is the move knight g5 which is the part of which takes us to the Allegor gambit. The main move is any file. This is a more respected and played continuation. This is called the Kizaritsky Gambit. We can play this position very well and I will be making some videos uh, on the Kizaritsky Gambit also in future. So in this game, white played knight g5. The problem with knight g5 is that after the move h6, the knight on g5 is trapped. It has got no place h3 and f3 are guarded, e6, f7, h7 and e4 is blocked by his own pawn. So every square is guarded but that is what white wants. White is ready to sacrifice the knight. Black can go for the move f6 here. Very interesting when after qg4, fg5, qh5 check is quite reasonable. But maybe after qg4, black can play h5 first and then take the knight. Black played h6 in the game. Because of h6 now qg4 makes no sense. There will be just hg. The diagonal doesn't become weak. This is the invitation to white. White wanted this only. That when black attacks the knight, he will break black's castling. And the sharp game continues after the move nf7. So this comes as a bit of a surprise to us. Because what are the factors for which white has given a piece? See, firstly, in King's Gambit, when black plays the pawns on f4, he places his pawn on g4. The pawns f4 and g4 are very weak. Here, the king has become weak and it will be permanently unsafe. White has given a whole piece here. Because we took knight f7, but we had already sacrificed a pawn on f4. White is not trying or in a hurry to regain g4 or f4 instantly. So white will complete his development. One of the threats is also QG4. Idea QH5 check, but he is not really in a hurry to do so. 
obvious moves here bishop c4 which is not that great because it helps black to regroup his pieces after d5 bd5 it looks like we got the pawn and that too with a check but after kg7 we see that g4 is nicely protected next move will be nf6 and the tempo will be lost see the whole concept is to give the pawn for initiative give the piece for initiative but black's development will be completed very quickly here and white will not have enough play for the piece do note that king is far safer on g7 than on f7 so white continues simply here with the move knight c3 after qg4 there was knight f6 <coughs> now also black has to play very quickly he should develop the pieces fast otherwise after the move like mc6 d5 sorry bishop c4 check d5 and d5 is far superior because this time we know that bishop c4 d5 knight d5 kg7 d4 followed by bishop f4 and white will have decent play for the piece black acts swiftly black plays the move d5 now knight d5 allows knight f6 the knight on d5 will be attacked and e4 will be attacked so of course white is not in a hurry to collect the pawn he wants to develop his pieces fast put pressure on f4 and g4 right now g4 is somewhat safe so white eyes the next weakness which is the f4 the whole f file is the main source of play for white so white wants to develop quickly bishop f4 bd3 castle and bring the rook and king on the same file black will soon have to play the move king g7 on his own okay but then the bishop on f4 can become very dangerous from the square e5 on the a1 h8 diagonal and should play here very actively if d to e4 then bishop f4 and next move will be bishop c4 check when after bishop e6 bishop e6 k e6 queen g4 check and we will see that white has completed all his development and he is going better move bishop e6 will allow d5 so we will say that this position is clearly better for white perhaps one of the better way is bishop b4 immediately putting pressure on the knight white can simply go with the move bishop f4 followed by bishop d3 and short castle and he can put pressure on the f5 do note that after nf6 here white can choose between bishop e5 and bishop e2 when after castle again white has play on the f5 in the game black played nf6 after which bishop f4 and here it was far better to go for the move bishop b4 when the play is very complex after e5 there is going to be knight e4 so <coughs> white can play bishop e2 idea castle because bd3 allows d into e4 so bishop e2 not only attacks g4 intends to go castle and after the move bishop c3 bc white is already threatening e5 and knight into e4 will allow bishop into g4 or castle so we can see that knight e4 castle is very dangerous due to the discovered attack so first king g7 castle and here knight into e4 will allow bishop e5 check which is winning for white so black goes knight c6 stopping bishop e5 in fact he could have played knight c6 one move before stopping bishop e5 when after castle kg7 he would reach the same position and now white has the strong move c4 d5 is attacked multiple times after dc we are having the move d5 followed by bishop e5 so this position looks like really complex but we can already choose white over here after the move knight e4 c into d5 we can see the opening of position has already favored white if black tries to go for a mating attack here with the move qh4 then after the move dc g3 black is trying to play for mate but his own king is very much unsafe there comes b5 check kg6 and the move bishop h5 which leads to a 
win for white. Since after winning to h pi, win h pi, k h pi, just bishop h8, and white will be exchange up. In the game, black played the move c6 because he thought after the move bishop e5, he is in a position to do n b d7, and after the move e5 also, there is knight e4. When the knight is reasonably placed on the e4 square, also white black can consider the move knight h5, which attacks the bishop immediately. So white was more focused on completing his development. So he placed bishop e2, idea to go castle, and then only bishop e5. So after castle, white will have both threats e5 and bishop e5. Black goes b4, attacking the e4 pawn. So castle, and now the. Real threats begin, and every move is very, very, we can say, uh, critical for the black position because this king is coming under fire. Let's look at some lines. After Kg7, White has choice between E5. When after Knight E4, we see that Bishop G4 is very strong. Bishop is about to. Trade on c8 and then the queen will join the attack from the h5 square. Gaining material is very dangerous. Bishop c3, bc, knight c3 will allow queen f3. Knight is attacked and same again after bishop uh, c8, queen c8, white has very strong move e6, idea bishop e5 check. So this position we can say is already perhaps losing for black. Black trade the move in e8. But now different kind of problems happen because after b5 perhaps he wanted to play the move rook f8 and get rid of the pin which was not possible in the kg7 variation. White goes e5 very similar idea if knight e4 then bishop g4 threatening bh5 check followed by queen's entry from the g4 square. So bishop into c3 and now white instead of capturing bc3 went e f6 and here we can say that the white position is totally winning the king on e8 is stuck in the middle of the board bishop b2 is very dangerous because b2 rook b1 again bishop c3 allows something like f7 check when after kf7 bishop c7 wins king on f8 will be very very unsafe so black went b b4 bishop into g4 and now the threat is one is bishop h5, other is more dangerous bishop c8, queen c8, and queen h5 check, winning the game instantly. Black tries nd7, idea is if bd7, king can try to take on d7, but even then after the move qg4, it's problematic. Perhaps the only chance is to go bd7, qd7. And after QH5 check, try to keep the king on the D8 square. Even then, I would say the king is not that safe. White went for the better move. Bishop H5 check, king F8, and the queen joins the attack. Now we can easily say the game is over. Queen G7 is threatened. Rook G8 allows Bishop H6. Rook G7, QG7 mates. Only move Knight F6. Stopping the check on g7 and queen comes to g6. So, of course, knight into h5 loses on the spot. We have run the mating pattern with bishop and queen. Here, bd6 check is a double check and checkmate. Queen e7 is played amongst bishop h6, be5, and bd6. I prefer the move bd6, but be5 is also very strong. Bd6 because if bishop takes d6, then rf6 check, queen f6, queen f6 check, kg8, and queen f7 mates. Force to take on f6, queen f6 check, kg8, and queen f7 checkmates. So the only option is d6 when after rf6 check, ke7, and here I think we should play the move. Qg7 check first or rook d6 first or lead to a winning position. Maybe rook d6 first because we want to involve this move into the game. 
आफ्टर बी डी सिक्स टू की वन चेक के डी सेवन टू जी सेवन चेक एंड रूप विल बी टेकन विथ द चेक एंड वाइट मीन्स कहे बिशपी सेवन जस्ट अलाउस क्यू एफ सेवन वेट सो द ओनली वेट टू अदर वेट टू स्टॉप वेट इज द मूव बिशप ई सिक्स एंड नाउ इट्स वाइट टू प्ले एंड बीन वाइट फिनिशर्स ऑफ द गेम विथ अ स्मॉल कॉम्बिनेशन so we can say that it's making four in all lines let's look at the moves now we have bishop h6 check we have bishop d6 check and we have bishop e5 so white went for the most forced move first that is the bishop d6 check which gave him the win let's calculate the lines now if bishop takes d6 then rook f6 check queen f6 queen f6 check bf7 and queen f7 white So white waits on the fourth move there. After the move, Q D six. Now Q F six check allows K E seven. So Q F six check K G eight and Q G six mates. This mates even faster. Game continued. B D six. Q F six. K E seven. Q G seven check. And after B F seven, Q F seven mates. So black resigned over here. We saw that how the white's initiative grew after the move C six by black. Of course, this is a very sharp line, and it's not to everyone's liking to give up the piece in this way. In future, I will be making some lessons on the Kizaritsky gambit also, and eventually I will try to make a repertoire based on King's gambit. Those who want to play sharp. I am going to do lessons based on King's Gambit very soon. I hope you are enjoying these lessons. Do like, share, and subscribe the channel. Thanks for your time.